The story continues on the Mercia Largo, and more importantly, the Mercia Largo engine. Because now we've had to take it apart again, and you would not believe why. Knowing what we know now, do you agree that £100,000 was a little too steep for this Mercia Largo? But since buying it, I've been stripping the engine apart and finding multiple reasons why this car hasn't ran it in over seven years. They're literally finger tight, but just when we thought we nearly had it back together, we had to take the full thing apart again. Which brings us back to our favorite place in the world, Lamborghini. Back again for <laughs> the weekly shop. <laughs> I really am becoming a regular here, but seeing all the Lamborghinis in the showroom only gives me more motivation to get my Mercia Largo back on the road. After all, this car is my dream car. I've always wanted one, and I was always told never to give up on your dreams. Now we've already learned so much about the Mercia Largo, and it's like we've only just got started on it. Unfortunately, in the last video we learned when trying to split the headlight lenses that they use glass instead of plastic. And the best part about that is you can't buy the glass lens separately. You need to buy a full headlight for over £10,000 from Lamborghini. And that's the same reason why you see an absolutely immaculate Mercia Largo, but it still has the foggy lenses in it because nobody dares split them. But I have a solution for these headlight lenses and it only costs £300. But I've been offered £1,800 for this headlight lens if we can get it off without breaking it. So I'm going to be giving Chris it, and if you can get it off, 400 quid is yours. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> we'll check back with Chris throughout the video, but for now, I need to get the Mercia Largo in the ramp because we've got more work to do on the bumpers. In the last video, I removed the front bumper. And in this video, I'm going to remove the rear bumper. After I removed the rear wheels, it revealed a two-shock system on the suspension. And it looks like IBAC actually made the springs for this. And more than likely, it's going to be Bill Stein who make the shock absorbers. Both of these companies are local to me, so it's looking good for when we come to rebuild the suspension up. But as I started removing the grills of the rear bumper, I found something. So here's another worry that... I was a bit worried about. <laughs> when I saw this wire when I was getting this car, I thought it was going to be for this reason. And now I think it is. So there's a wire here, um, which we thought at first it might have been going to like a rear camera for when they're on the track days. But as we suspected, this wire looks like it goes into the radiator fan and then it grounds off. There it goes, it grounds off down there. This is definitely not Lamborghini, which, well, this is a worry because one, either because they've wired the fan on and they got a switch in the car so they could keep the car cool because it's probably on all day for the track days, which is a, which is a possibility. Yeah. Or two, you know how the ECU, well, you know how the battery was jumped the wrong way round and it's fried the clocks it possibly could have fried part of the ECU, which tells the fan when to come on, like a temperature sensor. So they now have to have a permanent switch in the car to keep the fan on. Nice. Is there another wire going to that one? There's another fan. I can't see what's going on with the wire. Well, we'll find well, out whether- this one, this one goes to a plug. That one goes to an actual plug? Yeah. Okay, so for some reason, this one's been rewired. It could have had an accident. It could have had an accident, Stop ripped the wires there. and they could have refixed it. Or the ECU's fried and they've done this so they can actually have the fan switch in the car, which I don't even know where the switch is. I've not seen a switch. And the problem just gets even more strange. On the fan on the right hand side of the engine, it's plugged in as usual. So this one, I suppose, works. But the one on the left hand side, turns out it doesn't go to a switch and the positive wire is just wired straight to a live, meaning the fan would be constantly on. But whilst I try and figure that out, let's see how Chris is getting on with the live. I've just got the first glimpse oh. of the underside of the glass, but it's taking a fair bit of bending, so I am on thin ice. Oh. So Chris is making progress, and I'm making progress in taking the rear bumper off. But I spoke too soon because Chris has some bad news. It's, it's not good news. I've got a little, little bit of cracking going on there. Although I gave Chris this headlight at the beginning of the video, he's actually been doing this for three days. How are we doing? Day two in the big brother house. <laughs> 
He's been trying everything. He's watched YouTube videos, used brake cleaner to break down the sealant, but this glass lens is providing maximum protection for the headlight. Which is exactly what Surfshark does when you're browsing the web. And that is because Surfshark is a VPN tool, which stands for Virtual Private Network. And it's surprisingly strong. <laughs> <laughs> that means it encrypts all the data sent via the internet so no one can see your passwords, view your online messages, or just see what you're doing online. Let's say over December you want to watch some Christmassy films like Elf. But if you're in the UK, it's not available on Netflix. But that's no problem for Surfshark. If you click in the top right hand corner and then go over to change your browsing location to somewhere like Germany, then go back onto Netflix, search for Elf again, and there it is, ready to watch. It is the best time to get Surfshark right now because during Black Friday and the holiday season, there is a special offer. If you click the link in the description, you'll get 85% off plus an extra three months for free using code Matt Armstrong. There's also a 30 day money back guarantee, so there is literally no risk. Thanks, Surfshark. I've been scraping it for three days now. Yeah. I've broken it in two places. Mm. We've got one break here and one break here. Yeah. And well, let me show you quick. Let me show you. I'm here. This is what we're this is what we're aiming for. Yeah, this is what we want, just without all these shards of glass everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We want to try and keep this in one piece. Hopefully. So. But we have to say, like, I just showed we could see how much like silicon is used, and it's not only used on like the inside, it's also used on the outside and everywhere. So there's a lot. That is fully loose. Yeah, that is lifting. There I is no I can there see is that, no Chris. attachment there. I can see that, Chris. And then all of this here. Yes, Chris. That's the same, Matt. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that, Chris. Okay, yeah. and then it's definitely not. I can attached. see that part you that broke. That bit there well. is definitely. I can see not that attached. bit, Chris. I can see that bit that you broke, Chris. <laughs> Even if I get it off in one piece, it's not been worth my selling. Yeah, he has actually been doing this for three days. Um, so. Okay, now we're gonna send it. This is the make or break moment. We probably should have just done this to begin with, and then the back of the headlight wouldn't have been broken. Here we go. <laughs> we tried absolutely everything, but the more we did, the more we seemed to just break the main part of the headlight, which only left us with one option. And even that was proving difficult. Let's see if it works this time. Until we realised the back of the glass may be the weak point. Yeah! <laughs> that seems to be the, the weak point. That is. We're celebrating a £10,700 <laughs> loss. Oh my god. I'll never get that time back. We had no choice, and it looks like I've got a lot of cleaning up to do now. And after I've cleaned that up, we're going to take a look at the gearbox, which we wasn't going to take apart until we saw this video that we posted on the Mark II channel. <laughs> First thing we're going to check is the release bearing for the clutch. We actually want to avoid replacing this because from Lamborghini, it's £2,800 plus VAT. The release bearing is in charge of pushing the diaphragm spring on the clutch cover, which in turn releases the clutch. And the release bearing is being pushed out by a hydraulic pedal. The problem is when the release bearing fails, it tends to leak fluid from the seals, which then pushes clutch fluid over the clutch plate, making the clutch slip. So what we're gonna do to test it's not leaking and the seals are all good is attach the hydraulic line, which would usually go to the clutch pedal. We're gonna attach it to a pump, which has some clutch fluid in it and pressurize the system. And then we should be able to see whether any seals leak. Nothing, it's sound. And it's good news. Although on a normal car, whilst you've got the gearbox out, you probably would replace the release bearing. For £3,000, I'm making sure I get the maximum life out of mine. But now it's on to stripping the gearbox. And the bad news is, it looks like this thing's been apart before. Once we've got the gearbox cover off, we can see all the gears and the synchros. And the first thing we're going to do is drain all the oil out to see if we can see any signs of metal shards. But so far, so good. The oil's looking pretty clean. I don't have much experiences with gearbox. In fact, I don't have any. So for me to try and explain to you, so for me to try and explain to you how this works, I'd more than likely get it wrong. But the only way to check to see if anything's actually damaged is just visually. We can see if any of the teeth on the gears are sheared away or any of the synchros are looking rough. And after a long inspection, it seems all to be good. That's until we notice something 
putting it back together. So it seems in every video, we find something new with the Mercer Largo and it's no different in this video. This gearbox did not come out of this car. There's an e-gear and a manual version of the Mercer Largo and this gearbox was an e-gear from what we assume anyway. This hole here is, well, we can't find any sensor that goes into that. Can't understand why it's there. Turns out that hole is for a transmission speed sensor for the e-gear transmission. And this is a manual gearbox that we've got on the screen now and it has no hole at all where that one is. So whether they've changed the gearbox from an e-gear and then put it into a manual and then they're blocking over this hole or I have absolutely no idea. Some of you are probably gonna say, well, maybe it was an e-gear car and they converted it to manual, but all 2002 Mercer Largos were manual. So there's, not, there's no chance of that. So more than likely what's happened is they've replaced, the manual gearbox was probably gone or broken as you've seen from this video. And maybe they could only get an e-gear box to replace it with. Oh, just fills us with confidence. <laughs> Demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least my dad finds the funny side of things. But even though it may have been an e-gear box and there's a few extra holes in it, we can't see any reason why it wouldn't work as a manual box as well. Because the e-gear is effectively just an automated manual box. It gets better. It gets better. <laughs> Just check out these two holes here, which are not meant to be at the top of the gearbox. And they're actually drilled out. And I can tell you exactly why they're drilled out. Because someone got a little brave. We think with these two holes here, that looks like they line up to the holes on top of the gearbox. But luckily they haven't gone through the gearbox. So close call there guys. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're back to the headlight situation. Finally, about an episode later, we have got what I originally went to take the lenses off for. Two exposed headlights, and it's not even the black that's causing that milkiness. It was the actual glass, like sort of fogging up. It was almost like burnt itself. So it's a good job we've taken that off and we're gonna have some nicely fresh, restored headlights. And the reason why we had to break the glass off is because we ended up, well, Chris ended up, Whoa. Actually, yeah, Chris it's ended up 400, 400 quid. <laughs> For what? Breaking a headlight? I spent three days on it. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just show which one? That bit was me. This bit, that was yeah, you. Yeah, that bit was me, but that's just a bit weird. So, but I think this is redeemable. We can glue it that's back on. Be that's going to be able to glue back on. One thing that we are going to do before, well, I think I'm going to do, let me know. Well, I'm, I've committed to doing it now. These silver bits in here, I'm thinking of painting on black and that way it's gonna give it a more evil look. And plus, I don't think anybody has ever done this on a Mercer Largo. There's probably a reason why, but let's find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's because they don't split the lights. They can't split the lights, but I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be the only one with black little circles in. Yeah? Hey, we might as well make it our own whilst we're here and do something unique to it. But I think this could look pretty cool. I'd also like to remind you guys who are watching this who are not subscribed to hit that subscribe button below because it is completely free and it helps you keep up to date with the Mercer Largo build. For now, I've added some etch primer and a bit of satin black paint. And right now, I feel like I've made the right decision here. The headlights are starting to look mean as anything. I bet you're wondering why we had to take the engine apart again. So as you know, we're still waiting for an oil pump for this car, the 3,000 pound oil pump, which won't be here until the 12th of December. But we noticed something which made us take apart this engine. So if you look underneath the engine, or this is the top side of the engine, you can see all the cylinders here. The thing is, one of these cylinder sleeves is 499 pound plus that and of course there's 12 cylinders so there's 12 sleeves and originally we thought this one is well we thought we might be able to get away with it but if you just look inside 
you can see a few scratches and scores along the sleeve. And if there's scratches or scores in a cylinder, then that could leave gaps for oil to get through into the combustion chamber, which is no good. Now I admit, we probably should have changed this whilst we had the engine stripped apart the last time, but we didn't think it was too bad, but the more we looked at it, we thought, we better do it, but for £499, it was pretty painful. So a new cylinder sleeve is in the engine, but that's not the issue we found. These things are called thrust washers, and there's four of them on this engine. They're like half moon shaped, and they sit around here, two at the top and two at the bottom. And these stop the crank from moving left to right when the clutch is applied. The thing is, the thrust washers aren't supposed to spin. They're supposed to sit in place right here, and the crank goes around in it. But the thrust washers that are here are spinning around with the engine. And we didn't spot this the first time around because we never moved them out of place. But it's a good job we sussed it this time. Check this out, you can see we can just spin the thrust washers round and round. So what normally stops these thrust washers from spinning round in the engine is that they usually have a little tab on the top of them. Just like the picture here. The thing is, if you look closely at this, there was a tab on this and it's been grinded off it is really rough on top of this thrust washer so why on earth would they do this we have the answer so the thing is there's only one thrust washer with the tab on it so they only need one because that one won't spin round because that one is in a recess which would be in the top of the crankcase just down there so let's say the person who built this engine before put the crank in and then all the pistons on then afterwards realize, oh no, I forgot to put the thrust washers in. But he wouldn't be able to put the thrust washer in, which has the tab on the top, without taking the crank back out, because there's no way you'd be able to slide it in the recess and get it round because it has that tab on it. That's unless, of course, you grind the tab off and then you can slide it around the recess it's, it's it's just pure genius <laughs> so the reason we went to lamborghini this morning was to pick up the thrust washers with the tab on them that they're supposed to have so this is what one is supposed to look like that's the other one and the funny thing about this is that the one with the tab on it was only 22 pound 66p each but if we needed this one without the tab on it it would have been £181.63p each. But if you're making some serious money moves like the guy who rebuilt this engine before, then we know that you could have just bought the one with the tab on it and gr ground it off. It honestly doesn't shock me anymore. Neither me or my dad have ever rebuilt a Lamborghini engine ever before. But this sort of stuff applies to any engine. But now you can see how the thrust washer sits in its little recess. And in fact, you have to actually put it on the crank and then slide the That's crank it, in. When the top casing goes on, it, they won't spin. So, genius. Just gets better and better. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. In my opinion, I think that small difference with those little rings from silver to black have made such a difference. It's just way more Batman like now. It's like a Marcialago, but with the mascara. And what's in this box right here should be the savior to our problems. £399 for some plastic lenses from Poland. Shout out to Poland. All I've got to do to seal these on is get the windscreen sealer out, put a nice bead around the edge, and then I can slide the new plastic lenses on. And in my opinion, they should have been plastic from the start. There have been some Merchelago owners which have told me the plastic lenses melt from the heat of the headlight bulbs. But the way I see it, if we replace the headlight bulbs to LED, there won't be anywhere near as much heat as there would be with the standard bulbs. I mean, you only have to look as far as the Gallardo to see that that has plastic lenses as well. I think these plastic headlight lenses have made an improvement. How good do they look for around 300 quid? They're super shiny. And the fitment is actually really nice. You're not gonna be able to see any of the side. The wings cover that up. With the black centers now, it's looking absolutely evil and Batman spec light. I think that's a 10 out of 10 job. Maybe you, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your mom, or your dad has bought a money pit like me. And you can grab these money pit jet tags with the link in the description box below. Perfect little, what would you say? Like a, not Christmas. a Christmas cracker. 
Stocking filler, perfect stocking filler. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. I've never been happier to do something in my life. Look how thick that glass is. That is insane. Third gear is 2,600 quid. So third gear is... <laughs> <laughs> Is there any gears that we prefer if they've gone? Yeah, fifth gear. Fifth gear's 380 quid.